Thank you. All right, we are now recording. Go ahead. Uh, hi, today is July 26. Today is a sandbox review, so let's get started. Um, so we had two projects from uh, previously that we had asked a tax to give uh, feedback on. And I believe the first one was Hexa. Um, Emily, do you want to um, tell us what we got yeah. on? Um, so all, some of our feedback back to Hexo was one, we wanted them to go talk to the security tag so that they were aware and engaged in those processes to engage in a self assessment, which they have already filed an issue for, um, as well as uh, answering some of our questions specifically around what is Hawk, what is the difference between Hexa and IDQL. Um, they did provide that there is a thread in our channel with that information and content. Um, so overall, it appears that they have satisfied all of our asks. I think the only item that would remain outstanding is providing the clarity that they gave back to us personally back into their own project documentation so that any potential contributor or community member interested in leveraging the project actually understands the differences between IDQL, Hexa, Hawk, and how all of those components work together. Okay. Uh, any questions for Emily? Okay, uh, are we ready to vote? Uh, it, like, it, it gives me the feeling that yes, uh, they've, they've stepped up, uh, they did the, what we asked them to do, they're getting good feedback, they're able to talk to people already, they know some folks in SIG security, so I think they are well on their journey, so I would, you know, I'd be positive on them joining us. Yep, I would add the caveat that we'd like their documentation to be updated to reflect the better clarity that they provided to us about the various projects. Yeah, we'll have to catch that at incubation, uh, Emily. And we can also add a note um, that when we do the plus ones, um, when we send out the email, plus one, and then add uh, some comments there on uh, making sure that uh, uh, they update their documentation. Yes, Amy, thank you. So Amy, could you please call for a vote on this? Zippen, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And yes, we can ask for them adding things around now. We'll ask for it in onboarding. Yeah, perfect. So the second one we want to talk of today is uh, Conveyor. Uh, I believe, uh, Erin, uh, we got some feedback and this is the updated language uh, that they provided afterwards. Um, some of the key things that I noticed was, uh, hey, if there are things that are uh, open shift related, then we would move it to some, somewhere else. Uh, and we'd like to focus on um, just pure Kubernetes here. Um, that was definitely one thing that I could catch. Erin, uh, uh, anything else you, you wanted to highlight here? Yeah, I think they took out the OpenShift specific things because it is based just on Kubernetes. I think it was more of a documentation issue. And they also broke it down into its other components like forklift and uh, crane and all those things to be separated out so we have a little more clarity on what is being contributed or not. I think for sandbox is fine incubation. We would probably want to have things more crisp. Um, I'd like to get a, you know, and I know that they went to the tag app delivery, um, felt like they had good alignment there. So, um, and this is the resubmit. What is confusing to me is how we should have them resubmit so that it is an addendum to their original so we don't have to go back into the archives and figure out the diff. So that, I, I did that already. Um, uh, no, okay. I know you did. I just wondered if there's a better way we can do that for projects than them go. Correct. I, I have a feeling that we should ask them to email us an update or something like that or, or open any issue um, or something to that effect. But yeah, let's do that offline. For now, we can start a vote uh, and get this in. I will add it to my uh, list of things to think about, uh, and uh, you know, we can uh, we can do it ad hoc. Um, get 
Yep. Uh, Amy, vote please. You can go ahead. So, okay, that's two. Uh, let's start the next one. Trousseau, uh, I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Trousseau um, is a KMS provider. Um, there is one more at the bottom that says external secrets operator. So there are two in the same space, but let's just talk about Trousseau here. Um, I think this was from ONDAT folks. Yeah. On that slash also slash wiki. Um, so I want to oh. clarify it's, I don't think it's actually a KMS provider. I think it's a plug in for a KMS provider to Kubernetes secrets. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I think the scope is like a secret encryption. Um, it's a scope very small. I just feel the scope is very small. Does it need to be a separate party? And also, I do not see the roadmap. You know, there's a link there, but there's no roadmap. It's and also there is, one, there is one a there one is. person project started in October. Yeah, it's super early. Um, yeah. It looks like they're even still working on building out KMS provider support. Um, I think Azure is the open PR that they have right now for it. I mean, there's been a lot of projects along the lines of encrypting secrets that have been created over the years that have not sustained development, which has been somewhat problematic, I think, for consumers, which is not, I mean, there's been demand for them, but. And most of the roadmap here is complete. And so even if you go dig through the roadmap, you're going to see almost everything's closed. So what comes next? Yeah, uh, this yeah. Stuff here, um, roadmap for V2, the page not found. You, you have to go into the projects and go search for it yourself. It's not that the link doesn't work. Okay. But if you go to the projects up there. Yeah, got it. Classic, classic project, yeah. To do not assigned okay yeah there are a lot of things closed yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's yeah. just read what they say what they want from us right oops where did it go yeah uh, Okay, so the other KMS plugins, um, probably, I don't know. So this is a KMS plugin. And one of the questions was, was it too small to be a separate project? And we are seeing that there's only one person working on it. Uh, so we asked them to come back. Is that what the consensus seems to be? I think they should come back. I think that they need to go talk to Kubernetes, SIG security, and maybe potentially tag security as well. Um, they have very little in the way of community meetup information. So if they're looking to get community contributors, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Amy, uh, can we summarize that and send it to them? Yeah, there's a note in chat. Let me know if that's good enough. The usual framing that we use for this, like a more robust community. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. We can move yeah. on. But the next one is Yam. Um, so this is like the, an... the uh, GitHub link doesn't work, and the GitHub link everywhere doesn't work. So I don't think we can <laughs> review. I couldn't review yeah. it. Um, yeah. I couldn't review it either. I went looking for it. The closest uh, thing that they have is the Yam exactly. engine examples in the repo, and that's oh, it. It's a hello world. There's nothing else. Okay. Yeah, so uh, one thing I did figure out was this is a person from Zoom doing this and do, almost like doing it by himself, I presume, or herself, I couldn't tell. 
so yeah so let's go back to them and say hey please fix your links and come back to us when you are ready and uh, another question is whether they can merge into an existing cd project like the argo cd or do they sure. need to be an independent one yeah so uh, yam incorrect web, web links yes thank you uh, so next one is armada um so this is from uh, G Research. Uh, I feel the mind. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, and so uh, Volcano Q, and it's in the same space, I guess. And it's a batch scheduler. Yeah, yeah. it's a batch mm -hmm. scheduler, and they uh, so I think they schedule across clusters, and uh, it, that that's a differentiation. Uh, but their CLI and the commands actually are not quite uh, cloud native. They have their own CLI APIs, which is their own specific way. And also they use Redis there. I, I don't know, do it. So I, I just feel it's not quite, um, but they have some very good scheduling algorithms. Um, Do you need this like to be compliant with like uh, the declarative model API or is nope we nope. don't have any requirements yeah okay so uh, looks like you know there's like a few people working on it for sure and it's been developed for several years yeah like back to 2019 yeah yeah and the other thing was um, you know so it sounds like yeah. Uh, I would I would support this. Um, you know the technical stuff is okay. They they have a community and they want to do this cloud native way. Um, and the key difference is um, you know sing, it's not a single cluster solution. It is a multi cluster solution, which is definitely one of the things that we would like people to move towards. Um, Is that uh, how many are the maintainers that uh, belong to one company or um, because they're, they don't have that email? Uh, it's, it's from G Research in UK. So, um, okay. yeah. And primary reason people come here is to, you know, start off to build a community here. So, um, okay. so any other observations before we can start a vote? Um, the only other thing that I would call it is they have a fairly significant backlog, but with the project being as old as it is, that's to be expected. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amy, call for vote, please. It's open. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, has anyone done a deeper look at Cubre. I, I've been talking uh, about things, so I would like to let somebody else to take a turn. Uh, I have taken a look at this. Looks like it's very preliminary, uh, has, does not have much information. Ray itself is a popular, it's a, it's a popular product on um, AI, you know, uh, workload. But I think they would like to integrate this with Kubernetes. But there's the, I think it's very early stage, I feel. They, Need to provide. Mm. Ray's not real early, in my opinion. It, it is being actively used in, you know, many different facets of industry. It was actually kind of instead of Spark, that was kind of retrofitted to be, you know, used in Kubernetes and didn't quite ever work well. Ray was like designed for cloud native use um, for AI ML. So well. Yeah, it, Ray it isn't itself. Ray that's being contributed, is it? It's Cubray, which lets you Correct. run Ray applications yeah. in Kubernetes. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Which is kind yes, of where I was just saying that Ray is mature. I didn't. I wouldn't want to. Uh, yeah, I think you missed. Uh, I think yeah. I, I didn't say May. I think Ray is popular. Is is not. I, I was talking about Kubray is very early stage. Okay, I misunderstood. Sorry, Kat. Uh, and so uh, the any scale is the name of the company that's backing this project. I think it's a Berkeley, Berkeley. I think it's the same um, group uh, which is working on Ray. It's a Berkeley, right? 
Yep, yep. It's kind of strange taking it out of the Ray project and putting it just this bit into CNCF when it's already part of a project yeah. where it kind of makes makes sense for it to be there. I agree. I don't know what the motivation behind that is. Like, yeah. is it? That's very limited. Does not provide much information. Yeah. Ray itself has a lot of information, but Coop Ray, you know, not much information. So there is no other projects in the space um, is basically what they mentioned here. Um, and uh, they want a closer partnership with Kubernetes community. So those are the reasons they are coming here. Like, do we have operators today mm -hmm. for specific things? Like, uh, I think there's we, one more Postgres uh, QL uh, thing we, that below. Historically, we've mostly said no to operators because we would have so many separate projects and it's not been clear how to manage that. I mean, I think that it seems to me that they don't need to be in the sandbox to have a closer partnership. They can have a closer partnership by working more closely with the community, which they're welcome to do, but leaving it as part of the Ray project just seems to make more sense to me. Or they, yeah, if they want to integrate this, they can um, use a like Kubernetes uh, CRD, Kubernetes operator, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're already doing that. Um, yeah, they already are doing that. The, it, it's just odd because I, I think it's already being widely used in the Kubernetes community. And I don't know if the sandbox component is just to formalize the community structure. Um, I would agree um, having it remain with the Ray project. Yeah, but if they really want to come here, are we stopping them, <laughs> right? Well, it sounds like we have precedents in the past that we don't accept operators. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think it's, we've written that down anywhere. I don't we think it's been written, written down. down yeah. No. Uh, see, see, the other thing is like, this is essentially the scientific community, right? Like um, profs in Berkeley and, you know, the the general SF, uh, different uh, Stanford and other people too, right? So we need to draw them in. If this is the way to draw them in, you know, I wouldn't mind. But, but we're not, I mean, we're not going to get the whole Ray project probably. I understand, which would, right. Which yeah. would be like, it would make sense for Ray to be in somewhere in Linux Foundation, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that would that would make sense, but just one little bit of it and not the rest of it is just kind of the, you know the least the least important part of it is in Linux Foundation and the rest of it is not. It's just weird. Okay. So, uh, do we want to take a vote or do we just say not at this time? Okay. Do we As want to ask them? Provide, oh, go ahead. If they can provide more information about what they they are going to, they said they are going to provide tools to do, you know, all this. But there are there's little information on, you know, how they are going to do that. What they are, you know, uh, so so the, I just feel it's there's not much information to evaluate. I think Ray itself is a very good project. Uh, it's a great project, and also I agree with you, Dims. You know, uh, we it's good if we you know uh, include like those Berkeley, you know, those university, yeah, into the CNCF. That's a great thing. And just if they can provide more information, I just it's hard for me. Uh, it's easy you can find a lot of information about Ray, but for Coop Ray, what exactly? You know, uh, not much information. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the pause part of the reason why they're coming here, right? Like they want to, they want more people to know about Kubernetes. I am torn, uh, honestly. So I look at I this that, and yeah, I, I say, being a sandbox project isn't going to give you all that extra visibility where everybody's going to notice you. That's so, what I was just going to say. There's no marketing for sandbox anyway. So if the motivation is marketing dollars or visibility, that's not going to happen in sandbox either. Yeah. I totally agree. 
And what's you. their motivation? I really want to know why they want this to leave the Ray project and join the CNC app. And if it's just marketing, I don't think they're going to get that level of marketing they desire anyway. Yeah, that's basically what they've said here, right? Um, but they've said that the whole open source, the whole Ray project would like to have a close relationship, not this little bit of it. Yeah. So uh, I, I would say plus one to like figure out, go talk to them in some form or fashion. Maybe they are coming to uh, Detroit. Um, we could have a talk with them or something, but it's probably early for us to look at this, uh, the way it is structured right now. So um, let's go with no for now. Any objections? Okay, good. Um, next one is open zero trust security platform. Uh, Which is actually no vector. Yes, the new vector. And, you know, have you pronounced it? Yes. The new vector. Although, although <laughs> the code, the code is not yet under the org, which is very confusing. Yes. Yes, and there are some bad GitHub links as well. Uh, they also have not imported the history into the. Um, there are three it, repositories, yeah. and uh, you know there is just links to the other new vector. Um, yeah. GitHub. So they haven't cleaned it up. Uh, it's not ready for us to review. I think. Correct. Um, Matt, any um, any words here? Since this is from Suze, I think. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what their timetable is for bringing over the history. I think they're going to just move the repositories over. Um, they're saying that here, right? The, the, hist yeah. the history is not in the in those repos. Yeah, it's not in the new repos. It's in the old locations under the new vector org. They no, have the, not they, reorganized. Those don't, no, those don't have the history. They just import. They import all the files as of um, last December. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have the full history. Yeah, which is kind of annoying. I mean, I I, I can see there might be reasons for doing that, but I, I would rather... I don't have the reasons for it, but I'm happy to go chase them down. I suspect that they were waiting on a sandbox decision before they did anything. Yeah, we need to turn the situation around. So please take that back, Matt, and let us, you know, come back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we are seven thirty minutes in. SRE works. Um, this is from Alibaba. I couldn't I work out what it does. From the dots, Same. There, there isn't a lot there. I got the impression that it's for operating and maintaining big data and AI deployments specifically that are leveraging AI ops, but there's nothing else that's there. It just, it's not clear whether or not it's Kubernetes native and specific, or if it's for a cloud service provider. It, it's there's just not enough. Yeah, and it, all the documents are uh, definitely in a language that we don't read uh, well, or zero for that matter. And it's from Tencent. Oh, Tencent. It's from Alibaba, right? Alibaba. Yeah. I think one concern, one concern is their code of con conduct is the enforcement is enforced by Alibaba project team. Is that okay? Uh, we work through, we have a set of things that they work through uh, as part of uh, onboarding, so we can clean that up. That is not a problem as such, okay. but we need to know what it does, and there doesn't seem to be a way for us to figure that out here. It could just be a language barrier, though, on the yeah. intent of SRE works as well. Like, I like the idea of some more uh, projects coming in where it's addressing these operational concerns from a community standpoint, but I just, there's not enough there that I can understand the extent of what is being contributed. Okay, so can we uh, redirect them to uh, tag app delivery? and uh, ask them to give a presentation there and uh, have a chat and then come back to I us. I think I want to be able to have them reapply with like 
robust documentation and project goals? Uh, let them talk to somebody first, uh, Amy. So yes, and one of the things that we've kind of committed to projects is when we do that, we have specific goals in mind for the tags to be able to review. And here, I'm just seeing larger clarity. Yeah. Okay. How do you want to phrase that, Amy? Um, I, I really think it's like the we're, we're unclear on the project's goals. Um, we'd like to have a presentation around the goals, the roadmap, and how you'd like to get more contribution. Uh, it, it, maybe it is there. We just don't know how to read it, right? Uh, since we don't know. Okay, the I like I like Richie's Richie's wording for this. Offer an intro and a demo to the tag. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that was awesome to provide this uh, all this in in English, right? They need to, yeah, fix uh, that. I won't force them just for us to review, but at least let them talk about the technology and uh, what they want to do, uh, and get a summary from the tag. Um, okay. Thank you, um, Bumblebee. Uh, did anybody catch how this works? And why Solo is bringing it here? So it seems to take EBF, EBPF programs as OCI images and load them into your kernel. Um, I'm, I didn't get why. <laughs> So I um so the, I think uh, I I goes I went through this project. It's it's targeted as build and run this eBPF as uh, containers. Um, say quickly. Um, I, I think that this eBPF is a very important uh, you know trend in the a way of doing networking. Um, so I think this is very useful. Um, yeah, but in terms of information, um. Not very much information, but I think this part itself is yeah, very important. I, I think the goal was to make eBPF have a easier user experience for people to develop against. And that was the goal of the project. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering whether this is something that fit into the CNCF, being where eBPF sits uh, all around. Right now, they only support uh, C code for what it wraps, although they do have Rust plan. Development only started last November. And since February, there have been 12 total commits since the start of February with less than a thousand change lines. Yeah, the tutorial is really nice. You get a feel of like what they are trying to do here. Um, how do you write a new eBPF program for sure? But cloud, cloud native, connections are mostly around like, hey, how can we package the, this into Docker uh, as a Docker image, OCA image uh, kind of thing, right? Uh, so going back to like, uh, what are they? Is there any reason we can't refer or recommend them back to the eBPF Foundation? I, I think they are not specific about eBPF, but they are more about, you know, tools or how to build and run it, run the eBPF as program as containers. Um, I think that's why I probably want to come here. Yeah. Yeah, but I think people are allowed to package things as containers outside, outside CNCF. I don't think, I don't think that necessarily means that they belong here. I mean, I would, I would want to see more community adoption, just because it seems that right. Um, it's not clear that that, you know, that is going to be the way people want to package things. So. And so, it's eBPF and C code, which are two things the CNCF is not really known for. So I'm 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 looking at this from it does this fit with us? Well, what would be similar to 
to something we've had. I mean, we've had recently some plugins to like VS Code for packaging. I'm just trying to think of, are there, is there tooling that's similar to help transition things to be cloud native or run within this ecosystem that we have taken Close, before? Closest thing I can think of is like code generators for things um, so that they can be deployed with uh, Kubernetes or cloud native stuff. Yeah, so, so we they, don't think of it, do, right? we, do we have any update from the observability tag? It says they did present. What I want to avoid is feedback we've been getting from various community members around, they go to the tag, they present, they get really good feedback and we they come into this process and then they get bounced and they feel kind of like, then they have to reapply. It, it seems like a, a frustrating, vicious circle, so. Agree, agree. <clears throat> uh, so we, we can give this a home and see where it goes, right? Um, So my question then would be, why Bumblebee a home here and Kubray not? I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just trying to figure out, just noticing in the comments that they had already presented. And if I completely agreed, I think part of what we're run, we're starting to run into, at least based off of this sandbox discussion, is there are extracurricular um, projects that are being proposed that aren't tightly coupled within the ecosystem. They're more uh, natural extensions of its maturity. So the question is whether or not those extensions, which kind of circulate in a different project arena, whether or not we should be including them or if they should go to that those other project spaces. And I'm not sure that we're ready to have that conversation to make a definitive decision, but we should probably do that soon because it will impact future sandbox applications as well as the existing projects we have in the ecosystem. Uh, so let me play one uh, argument, right? Uh, what, we do have projects that do WASM and then WASM gets um, deployed as uh, containers into various environments. And we do have a bunch of projects that does do that. So this is replace Wasm with eBPF and essentially what But I'm not sure that eBPF has the same characteristics as Wasm that make it interesting as part of cloud native ecosystem. Like there's a single shared kernel yeah. that you're putting injecting code into and you can't run general applications. Correct. It's a it's a tool for building uh, um it's kernel instrumentation. It's, it's like a, it's a tool for building kernel instrumentation and for building monitoring tooling and things like that, which is not in that sense cloud native at all. Okay, so that's what we tell them. We, we tell them that, yes, we have seen things similar to this before. It's just that this is a code generator for building tools um, that can be deployed uh, that, you know, Somebody runs this code generator once, write some tools, and then releases us in, in the wild, uh, and uh, you know, off off they go. But that's not workloads as such, right? So that is a distinction that we are making here. Yeah, I think that using cloud native packaging doesn't make what you're packaging cloud native. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, can you write this up, <laughs> Justin? <laughs> yeah, help me out with that one. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, thank you. Um, so next one is cloud native PG. Uh, who is passionate about databases in uh, Kubernetes? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start with this one. So cloud native PG uh, is a Postgres operator for Kubernetes. Um, and that's essentially what it is. And if you look at it, they do talk about the other ones out there, um, crunchy data, things like that, uh, the different operators out there. And they're looking to have 
one. If you keep going to the right, you'll see uh, their motivation here. And they're looking to, instead of having it disconnected, having it connected. But at the center of it is it's a Postgres operator for Kubernetes. Uh, uh, so are they asking us to king make it <laughs> effectively by, by promising it over the other projects? Not that all the other projects would like to merge into this one, but they would like us to king make this one by putting it into CNCF. Yeah, so yeah, so Kubernetes has quite some operators, right? CRD and operator. So I um I don't know why why do they want this to be a CNCF separate CNCF project? This falls into the same discussion we just had about operators. I think here, what I'm seeing here is like there are multiple Postgres vendors. They want to work together on a common operator um, here. Well, I, when, that, I, I don't think that's what they're saying. I think what they're saying is they would like us to choose this one and force everyone to work on this one. I don't, I don't see all the other projects saying we want to, we want this one to be the one that's chosen. Okay. So like if all the projects were saying we want to come together and work together on a project and we need it in a neutral place to do so. But the way I read this is this project is asking us to be Kingmaker and choose their Postgres project over all the other ones and not let the other ones in because then everyone can work on this one, which is not what we do. No, and, and uh, almost every developer is from a company call uh, from one particular company, and that's say, but they're all from the same company. Yeah, Enterprise DD. Okay, so um, we should tell them to go talk to other PostgreSQL vendors, get consensus, and then propose uh, a clean slate or or something. Um, well, I'm not sure we would accept it even then. Okay. Given the other discussions. So if what they're purporting is to kind of bring everybody together to do this level of development would it be beneficial for them to seek a working group within one of the sigs or one of the tags to start having these discussions rather than doing this king making request so what do we tell them to go do uh, tag app delivery i i think Personally, I feel like if the, if that's what they're they're seeking based off of what it is that they are saying, then yeah, tag app delivery, propose a working group, get the right people involved, and see what yep. happens. Okay, uh, that's fair. So, um, can you write that up, uh, Emily? Yes. Richie um, is more than an operator or something. We should we wouldn't be stopped from accepting a different project. Yes, you are right, Richie. No, we wouldn't be stopped. I think, but, but I think the way I read it is they're asking us not, not to, in effect, which is. Yeah, so they have to adjust their expectation <laughs> that we'll be, we might be bringing in more, right? If, if we do decide to do it, that is. Okay. So we give them feedback and move to the next one. Actually skip two down. This is duplicate. We are yeah. on DB pack. Uh, DB pack. I think I had trouble with this one too. So this one, uh, they're talking about using Postgres. Uh, no, MySQL protocol or something like that. This project was started in April. I think we're getting to a record of how quickly it's been from uh, <laughs> creation to submission. Yeah. So I think they want to support multiple databases, but doing what? DB pack, a database cluster tool pack tool. Yeah, this was the one I was talking about, MySQL protocol. Does it create like a layer to make that consistent amongst all databases? I don't really. 
yeah, again, yeah, the problem is I don't that, again understand like the full extent of. What it it says that it creates an operator to manage database topology, manage traffic, and allow users to customize traffic routing through hints using CRD rules and detecting hint and SQL. Two phase commits. Uh, we they want to prevent other companies from launching their own database mesh projects as well as get more developers. That is what their request is. Okay. So that's not a good way to <laughs> talk. <laughs> that might be language barrier too, right? Uh, it's a translation. I missed that. Yeah. yeah. The only, the only other call out that they have in there is to form a standard in the field of database traffic governance, but we don't, I'm pretty sure we don't do standards here. Oh, we, we do specifications. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that might be like a. Uh, but it, I mean, it's just too, it's too, it's too young. That literally is a month old. Okay. It's like, so we can, I just tell them to come back. Yeah, we can tell them yeah. to come back. Yeah. Gather some more momentum and then we can. Uh, revisit this. Yeah. Okay, Karina, CSI plugin. Okay, who's the storage person here? <laughs> Again, this is like in more the database scenario, which is interesting that that's kind of heating up. Um, beyondsent.com extremely low latency battle tested building blocks well known DBA experience again it's I'm the goals of just marketing and bringing more people in don't aren't quite what we're looking for And I've never heard of the cloud native storage system that they're contributing here, if that's paired with it or not. Which one are you talking about? Uh, let me find it. Scroll to the right. I don't, th and I also don't think we have each of the CSI plugins as separate projects. Yes. It's kind that's of just a subset of the CSI specification for Cube. So, I, I guess off the cuff, I don't feel like it's um, something we would generally take in. I, I am not sure that they have presented to the storage SIG either. Okay, so then it's easy. Go go talk to the storage SIG. Yeah, and and have you know Alex provide us a recommendation from that. But typically in the history, we haven't taken CSI plugins as a separate project in and of itself. And maybe I'm missing something, but that's... It's also a kind of new recent project without much history. Yep. Okay, so easy thing to say there. Uh, go talk to the SIG, come back, uh, tag and come back. Yep. Um, multi. But again, if we say that, I would like to in a separate meeting figure out how we get the feedback from the tag. If we've made that request, Yeah. we need to be able to populate this spreadsheet with a reapplication and a recommendation or whatever from each one of the tags as part of our standard process. Yeah, let, let's um, do an async thread on Slack uh, after this meeting and we can decide there. Um, okay. Hope you want to get the feedback. And we have to decide, do we want CSI plugins to be individual projects in the CNCF? Yeah. Right? I think and if the answer yeah. is no, and they go present to the tag and the tag says, looks good, and they come back to us, <laughs> And we're not interested in CSI plugins, then we just ask them to do a bunch of legwork for nothing. Uh, so we have to tell them what we are looking for. Uh, we have to tell the tag what we are looking for, right? So then it becomes uh, the, a bit more. I agree with Matt. You know, and uh, if you know, if we 
we don't think you know CSI plugin or any other plugin like you know CNI plugin. Okay, there are many CNI plugin, there are many CSI plugin. If we don't think that should be separate project, and um, do we still need to ask them to go to the tag and then come back? Yeah. Or if we allow that, there will be a lot of plugin. You know, because okay. see that. Yeah. We have seven minutes. Let's leave this for now um, as uh, something that they need to do. Uh, let them go talk to the the tag and we'll also tell the tag that is it just a csi plugin because we don't want just a csi plugin if there is more than like uh, there might be another language barrier here they are highlighting one of the aspects of the thing which is a csi plugin and they might have other things like i saw a scheduler or something too so okay. yeah. it might be like a full solution out of which they are highlighting the cloud native aspect so um giving them the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, so multi-cloud, uh, anybody saw this one? It's basically Terraform once deploy everywhere for multi. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I'd say, I mean, they start in January. It's a, it's a difficult problem. Like it's, it's a, Doing multi-cloud implementation of Terraform is like a huge piece of work. Um, Their commits have been pretty active, though. But it's to, uh, two people in six months. I mean, I would still say come back. Are you talking with the team here? Um, looks like there are five people. Oh, they have the name of the company is the same as the name of the project, too. There's only two of them with more than two commits. Okay. Yeah, I, you're right. They should they should grow a little bit more uh, community-wise before they come back here. Yep. It Can seems you... an interesting idea, like you know, generate Terraform and then use the use the tool. Yeah, but it, it's 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 not trivial. It's not it's not a trivial problem. I know. I, mean, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a but... gigantic problem, and so it's a question of like, can they create a community that's up for solving a hard a hard problem with lots of difficult edge cases and right. things and, and and that's the kind of that's the question really rather than just like yes it's crazy so, it works you're right like you will need to drop down into a terraform for any edge case and you know soon it'll be used less kind of thing right it's difficult to not every resource will be supported or you'll support lowest common denominator, so it won't be useful. Or, I mean, there's like what yeah, being, we, yeah. we, there's all, there's all these issues that are, they'll have to have a opinion on. Okay. For for a start, like just what are we? How are we going to try and do this? Given it's a hard problem. I would say, in addition to reapplying with a more robust community, that they should pick a few particular use cases that they intend on doing really well. Because that, that's the only way that they're going to drive some of that community adoption and development. Yeah. OK. Um, who wants to write this one? Because we are saying no, but come back, but also adding the context that uh, the two of you just said. OK. Uh, Amy, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm surprised we got to 14. The, there you go. Uh, four minutes left and external secrets operator. Uh, did anybody get it? So the main thing about here is they already brought a whole bunch of pro uh, people into this project. Uh, and they are very proud of the fact that uh, they've started. So for example, here, uh, if you're curious about the origins of the project, check out this issue on TR. So apparently, there were a lot more projects, and they all gotten consolidated here. So they standardized a CRD spec and uh, you know there's a links to a bunch of other operators here uh, so they basically bootstrapped already into a community and I think it's a good good place to start uh, what do you think Emily they're also an operator yes they are also an operator
I mean, I think we should be consistent. Yeah, but secrets are a big problem for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure we should be consistent with this one because it's, um, although it's implemented as an operator, it's not just an operator to X, it's a way to manage secrets in Kubernetes, which is a, which happens to be implemented as an operator. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, and it, and it supports multiple. Yeah, it's not one thing that they support, right? Yeah. Uh, the secret space needs a lot of work for us. Yes. Like even all of the things that they have listed, not a single one of them is a cloud native project. What do you mean the providers here? Yeah, the providers, AWS, Secrets Manager, HashiCorp Vault, Google Secrets, Azure Key Vault, like what do you want their open stack <laughs> i mean i i would love for us to have our own secrets yeah. management project yeah. but i know that that is probably not going to happen anytime in the next few years but yeah. we have in the past talked about how we should how to try and get one <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe this is how we do that <laughs> okay uh people who are watching this video Please start one, and we you will have an easy path into the sandbox. <laughs> we uh, had another secret uh, operator, right? Secret operator before, right? So there. Yeah, uh, th that were just two people or one person. Yeah, that was only one person working on it. Uh, oh, uh, Kathy. So can they've, they've got to consolidate. If we want to have such a party in CSF, can we ask them all to consolidate? that's what they're doing here like there's a i showed you that um okay yeah that list they've got yeah is what i raised on the other one there are all these dead projects and active-ish projects i think that the, the, this list is kind of part of the scope of the issue that people don't seem to be able to get momentum behind these projects long term for reasons that are right but this one is getting momentum right um, yeah looking at yeah at least for now so right yeah so i would be inclined to i'm okay to try it try it yeah okay yeah i mean it, it has a community yeah. um it fits the sandbox which is where they're trying to work it out whether or not it will last or not is on them yeah. um and it plays well with a lot of different systems, which I, I know this is a whole people want filled. So there's potential there. I okay. mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so Amy, can you start? It's open. Go ahead. The last one for today. Thanks, everyone. We got through a whole bunch today and <laughs> hopefully quite a few people will be happy. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to track towards the next one being September 27th. Any oh. objections? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank Bye. you so much, all. Okay. Thank you.